The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Go Paperless with DocLink, Integrated Document Management for Sage and Acumatica, presented by Perry Lynn Silkwood and Mark Whitbeck, Whitbeck of Alltech. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools and support whenever you need it. We've invited Alltech here today because they are the industry experts on integrated document management. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Perry Lynn. Good morning, and thank you. Oh, thank you, Jolene. I am clicking to share my screen now. So we should see the screen pop up. Jolene, can you just give me a verbal that we made the transition over? Yep, it looks great. Okay, terrific. Well, welcome everyone. So glad to have an opportunity to showcase DocLink with you today. And what you're seeing on your screen right now is a little bit of a roadmap of what we want to cover. Covering concepts such as why bother, right? Why go paperless in the first place? I want to bring you through a couple different definitions of DocLink. And then I also want to bring you through how DocLink can impact various departments in the organization. And that way that you understand that what you may purchase in terms of AP automation can indeed be extended throughout the enterprise. And if maybe AP is not an area of concern, but yet you're looking at maybe the sales order process, that can equally be a candidate for DocLink. So let's get started first with a little bit of a poll. So I want to ask Jolene if you wouldn't mind popping open the poll. And for everyone on the line, let us know a little bit about what piqued your interest about joining the webinar today. Was it about uh, uh, the desire to be able to e more easily access critical documents and information? Do you have maybe manual paper intensive approval processes that you're trying to get a solution for? Or it could be that you're trying to deliver documents outside the organization in a more efficient way. Or maybe you have another vision. So let us know kind of what brought you to today's webinar. And then we'll have Jolene maybe report back to us on what kind of re results that she's uh, seeing today. We'll give that just a couple more right. seconds. Sure. Sounds good. It's always interesting to know kind of what brought people to consider the webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Revisit back at the end as well, kind of how well did we do in addressing everyone's kind of primary areas of concern? And are you seeing the results on the screen, Perry Lynn? Um, I am not, but. Oh, then we have. 100% responded with manual and inefficient approval processes. 83% said accessing critical documents and data, and 67% said retrieving and, collect and collecting backup documents for delivery, and 0% said other. Okay, okay, got it. Well, then I can tell you that what you're going to cover today will absolutely address all of these particular scenarios. You know, now in hindsight, I sure wish I had asked, you know, what departments are everyone in? But, you know, that's okay. We have lots to share, and so we will continue on with kind of bringing you through the overall solution. So, our remote situation, right? There has been a lot of studies uh, that have come out in the recent time about now, what's happening with the remote workforce and is it going to stay? Are people going to resume back to a more, you know, in the office kind of environment? 
And what we're seeing overwhelmingly is that remote work is going to stick. And it may be that it's a, a percentage, you know, of the time, but I think that our remote work is going to stay. And there are huge implications on now how we can access typical documents that we would have had access to had we been in the office. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today is this very simple way of transforming the organization into a digital environment and really delivering the right people with the right documents and the right processes so that you can get back to the core competencies you know, of your organization. So let's kind of take a look at a little bit about more how DocLink can work. And I like to share this with people because I, I really believe that if you have a fundamental understanding of how DocLink works, then it makes it very easy to take any process that you have that is inefficient and laden with approvals and it's got documents flying around the organization, how it will work with DocLink. So let's take a quick peek. So number one is DocLink has the ability of capturing documents in many, many different kinds of ways because, of course, documents are either being initiated in our organization from many different systems. We may have documents coming from outside the organization into our organization. Now, typically what we're seeing is we're going to be able to manage that entire life cycle of the document, which can include the sending of that document through a particular automated business process, right? And then taking that document and data and pushing it into the ERP. And then of course, providing this complete visibility of where a document is not only in the process, but after the fact, you can have easy yet remote access to the document. So whether you wanna view it via the web, whether you're viewing it from your desktop computer, whether you wanna view it from a mobile application, all of those are possible. And then lastly, and this is, was a high percentage on the poll as well, was DocLink has the ability to kind of take documents that are generated from your ERP, Sage or Acumatica, join them up with supporting documents and send them out of the organization. So think really broadly. Um, we're gonna be showing, I think, a couple different concepts here, but purchase orders out to vendors is one example. Um, also accounts receivable, so the AR invoice and joining it up with supplemental documents is also another kind of use case there for you all. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about. I want to have you to have a very clear understanding of how DocLink can work kind of across the enterprise and really see what's going to be most meaningful. Where do you want to start? And then understanding, of course, that once you start in one department and you get really comfortable on what that means to your organization, then you can take the same modules and extend them to other areas in the organization. So it's really beneficial because you're spending money on software once and then able to continue to squeeze out more value. So let's first talk about AP. I want to start with AP because we just see it over and over. It seems like most people tend to start in accounts payable. Um, regardless of what kind of initiated the conversation, people tend to come back to AP. And I think it's probably because there is just so much paper in accounts payable, or documents, if you will, and there is a very specific approval process and a matching process that goes along with it, and we want to obviously impact creating that transaction. Plus, we're going to talk about the um, costs of doing business manually and what that can mean to the organization as well. So, what can you do in AP? And are these some of your struggles? So, does this, you know, can you relate to these ideas? So, number one, uh, when we're talking about AP approvals and AP automation, it's all about doing automated two and three way matching. So automatically taking the purchase order and the receiving document and the invoice and being able to match them electronically. That's critical. It's huge in terms of time savings and driving productivity in the organization. Next, we've got invoices that likely need to go through some kind of approval process and DocLink can do that. So that's really helping out with the approval process. 
and we're going to revisit workflow again when we start talking about that, you know, an inbound customer PO that also needs to go through an approval process before it can become a sales order. Uh, but back to AP. So approvals. We also want to really empower your organization and allow you to stop doing data entry. So we want to minimize data entry and also give you electronic access to documents. So no more filing cabinets, no more storing documents on a warehouse floor and giving your organization agile yet secure access to information and documents so that the right people have access to the right documents. And that way, we have the, your internal kind of employees no longer calling AP or other people for documents, yet they can get access to the documents that they have been given those secure rights to view. So really, really important. And of course, whenever we talk about viewing documents and that data push, we're talking about it both being inside the ERP and access outside of the ERP. Why? Well, not all users have access to the ERP, so you want to give them that broad access. All right, AP automation. We hear this term over and over, but I think it's a good way of kind of setting the stage for what Docling can do in your other departments as well. So here's kind of a little bit of a, a pictorial, if you will, about a traditional you know, manual AP process. And if you just think about it in the context of your own organization, any time that we have documents coming into an organization, we're already kind of restricting it, you know, in a paper-based world because you don't have, you know, this easy access to information or awareness of those liabilities. So with AP automation, you really can streamline the process and drive efficiency in the organization to a real significant tune. So if you are plagued in your organization with having to do more with less, you know, then DocLink can be a key component for you. So what we're doing is we're taking a very labor intensive process you know, um, and streamlining it into something that's very, very simple so that we can have technology do the heavy lifting. So we can have an invoice come into email perhaps leverage OCR in order to be able to read that invoice automatically and do automated matching so that it's looking at your, your ERP's table information and, and already saying, does it match to what was entered for the packing slip? And does it match what was on the PO? And if yes, let's do an automated entry into the ERP because there's no issue with that particular invoice. And for those that have some kind of discrepancy, then we can send that into a workflow and have someone kind of look at it and say, all right, well, why didn't it match? And what's going on with this invoice prior to it continuing on in the process? Okay, so it's really streamlining that entire process, not only from the moment that the invoice arrives in the organization, but through the entire approval process, the entry process, all the way to searching and retrieving and experiencing an audit and having all of that document packet electronic. Now let's talk about the benefits because I think it's really important to look at the organization and really think very strategically about what's not working and what is the financial impact to the process not working. And then that way, depending on what your role in the organization is, then you have more clarity on whether or not that the issue is worth spending money to solve. All right, so take a look at this chart. I'm gonna come up with a poll in just a moment, but I want to just have clarity on what are the benefits of going paperless? And it's all about saving those hard dollar calculable costs, right? You may have off-site storage, you may be needing to repurpose filing cabinet square footage to actual employees, or maybe you're looking at you know, contracting a facility. Whatever the case is, there also may be time saving. Time does equal money, but it's oftentimes interpreted more as a soft dollar savings. So what would it mean if you were able to you know, no longer do data entry? Does that translate into a hard dollar savings, you know, or is it simply more of an efficiency? And then breeze your eyes over the strategic initiatives. For our C-level folks on the call today, 
what's happening in your organization? Where are you trying to take your business? And will this kind of help get you there? So I wanna now do a poll. And I'm curious to know from everybody on the line, kind of where are you in this process of looking at the benefits and what's most important to you? So let's, um, Jolene, let's initiate that poll again. And I'd be curious to know for everyone, kind of rank for me where the benefits are for you as an organization. Are you driving hard towards cost savings? Is it more about the time savings from your perspective? You know, are you actually trying to look at things from more of a strategic initiative? You know, so rank for me where are you seeing, you know, what, what's going on in the organization? And then Jolene will kind of take a look at that poll. And then also we can maybe even share the results. I'm yeah. not seeing the poll getting so maybe I'm oh, not seeing it's something from my end and we have responses. Oh, it is. Okay. Sorry. I thought I saw a little flag, but I didn't quite see it this time. No worries. So we'll just give that one more minute. Sounds great. Perfect. I'm always curious to know, you know, and it, what I see happening in other kind of webinars is there's like a little bit of an ebb and flow, you know, sometimes uh, depending on who's on the call in the webinar, we might have, you know, a strong kind of pull on the strategic initiatives. Most times I see cost savings and time savings kind of flip flopping between each other. Um, but I'm curious to know what 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 is happening on today's call. Yep. And it looks like we have 67 percent that voted for time savings. And then we had 33 percent vote mm -hmm. for strategic initiatives with zero for cost oh, and zero for others. All right, so we have, we have all, oh, that's great. Okay, so time savings is the key. All right, well then let's kind of keep that kind of theme going on as we move forward as well. And we'll try and wrap that into our dialogue for everyone also. Thank you, Jolene, I appreciate you doing the poll. That's so helpful. All right, so why don't we take a peek at software now? Um, Mark Whitbeck is one of our senior sales engineers, and he's going to take us through kind of what does it mean when we talk about AP automation. And so I think we will cover these three areas, and then Mark may have some other things that he wanted to cover as well. But what does it mean when we say, well, let's capture a purchase order into the system? You know, there's no more printing, there's no scanning, there's no data entry. Of course, with the integration with DocLink, it comes into the system. That's the first document in our packet. And then we can also take that PO and push it back out to the vendors. That's a really cool use of the application as well. There's also the possibility of that web portal, which is giving your vendors some easy access to their documents. And then I really want to focus on that AP automation so we can take a look at how important it is to be able to have that invoice coming in via email, leverage OCR to read the email, and then do the automated matching. So I think that just laying eyes on that will help those people um, if this is the area of concern for them. So I think with that in mind, um, Mark, why don't we pass it over to you for the demonstration? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Perlin. Let's give a second here. Bear with me while I share my screen. I want to make sure we can see everything just right. <clears throat> so with that, we should be set. Um, so really, to, to start with this, one of the, the most important aspects of a document management solution, or I like to say document lifecycle solution, is um, the easy, easy way and ability just to get paper documents into their digital formats. The reason being is because not only does it allow you to go paperless, but it provides some efficiencies downstream. So those paperless documents and the metadata linked to that uh, become easily accessible. We can start doing some cool stuff with matching data, sending documents out, and that's what we'll touch on in just a moment. Now I'm using a, a Sage 100 machine to kind of highlight this, but you know we really integrate with everything, uh, everything Sage Acumatica. So don't focus more on the the look and feel of the ERP, we can integrate and pretty much do everything that we're doing uh, today in the ERP that you're using uh, currently. With that in mind, I want to start with the purchase order entry screen. Now, this doesn't change for you. Everything stays as a, a PO entry 
where Dahlin comes into play is really uh, allowing you to do what you're used to doing, probably in a paper-based world, in uh, printing physically that purchase order after it's entered. Uh, but instead in Doglink, we use a capture printer. So if I just go to Quick Print, I choose a special printer that's uh, linked for Doglink. And if we see that uh, right here, we can see where it says ERM Capture. It's just a fancy way of saying print capture. So we do the same print. We go ahead and do a print just like we do normally. Or if we want to print POs in a batch, we can do that as well. Doglink's smart enough to handle batches of POs. And Doglink really takes it from there and grabs that document, all the related data, and brings it into the digital repository. What that means is it's easily search and searchable and retrievable, uh, and we can actually link up that document with the screen in Sage. And this is a, there's a handful of screens that are integrated into uh, all the ERPs that we're talking about today. This is just an example where we can simply go to the transaction, one click, view docs, and find that document in the Docklink digital repository. Now we can always search and retrieve those documents in Docklink, but this gives an easy access to those power users in the ERP to find their documents without actually having to go into a separate application. Now with the PO, the other part of this is the, uh, the, the delivery of it, right? So think a physical document gets stuffed in an envelope and you uh, lick a stamp, which I hate doing personally, uh, and sending that via snail mail to your supplier, right? Uh, ERPs can typically do that via email. So if you're already doing that, fantastic. Uh, Docklink takes it to another level and says, great, why don't we not only auto deliver that purchase order, but we can actually attach additional documents along with that purchase order, you know, uh, anything that our supplier needs to process that PO. Um, and also what this does is it allows us for future use of other documents that are gonna come in. With a PO, it always accompanies a, a PO invoice. So we want that data, that metadata to be linked in the digital repository. So when a PO invoice comes in later, well, we can match it automatically. This, this is replacing the need to go back to your, your filing cabinet, find the purchase order, look at the PO invoice, make sure everything matches down to the line item level. Uh, well, we have actual technology that does this on the fly for you. So uh, OCR is a great technology to match data up, auto data extract, and from the uh, perspective of time savings, uh, the OCR capabilities are going to significantly uh, increase time savings for users to not have to enter data. OCR is going to do that for you. Uh, that's from anything from the uh, vendor information of that, of that invoice or unique values of that particular invoice, like invoice number, which gets auto extracted um, through relative confidence levels and things like that, dates, totals, amounts and even all the way down to the line item level. So knowing that that, pur that purchase order is already in the system, when an invoice comes in with a matching PO, we're gonna say, awesome, we already have the PO. We can look at the line item level and say, does the PO have 75 units? In this case, at that line level, uh, 25 units of a different item to say, perfect, we do have that match, 100%, let's send it and wrap that back into the ERP automatically. So we're doing matching 100%. Um, sending that back into the ERP for it to be posted. Really, there's not a whole lot of manual touching uh, involved in that. Um, if there is some sort of approval process, there may be some extra human eyes that need that, and we can automate that as well. Uh, if it's a, you know, based on dollar value limits, we'll send it to that department head um, that we pull the invoice from and send it directly to them based on dollar value limits. These are all automated rules that can be built in. They're uh, user defined. We can build them exactly for you and not somebody else. So, you know, we fit your mold, not the other way around. That's, that's the way we like it. Um, with that in mind, I will uh, send it back to Perry Lynn to, to continue off and uh, talk about some other things that, that Doglin can do for you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mark. So there are a couple things that you hit on there that I think deserve some extra emphasis, if you will. So um, sending, supporting documents along with the primary document. So you had shown us the sending of the purchase order out to the vendor, and maybe there were some backup documents. That's a huge differentiator for DocLink in the marketplace. We're going to revisit that as well when we start talking about AR invoices. But also viewing documents right from within the ERP screen as part of this 
entire kind of holistic process of document management, that's really critical as well. It's different than just simply linking a single document to the screen in a manual way, but it's automatically linked by the nature of the process. So that was a really huge thing I thought that stood out for me. And then also, of course, OCR. OCR is critical, especially if you are concerned with automatic data entry and automated matching. Again, matching either the invoice back to the purchase order and the packing slip, or it could be that you're just simply really wanting to drive process efficiency and still want to process non-PO based invoices through OCR as well. So that was really huge. So thank you, Mark, for that great demonstration. Now, um, it goes without saying, but if anything has piqued your interest here in the AP automation and automated matching, let SWK know. They can set up a call with us here at DocLink. We can kind of outline what you're doing in this area today, and then come back to you with a preliminary quote and even a demonstration on how DocLink would uniquely solve your particular business issues. So maybe I just ask if you are interested in that, why don't you chat back to Jolene and just let her know that you know AP automation is critical for you and then she'll be able to um, get you in touch with the right person. All right, so we've taken care of accounts payable and we've given you kind of a little bit of a bird's eye view on what can happen there. So I now wanna take these same concepts that we're talking about and see how they are uh, perceived, if you will, uh, or processed on the quote to cash side of things, or sales order processing and accounts receivable. So I'd like to start with this slide, because if you recall from our kind of beginning, there are lots of things that you can do with DocLink. And so if I think by sharing with you all the documents that are related to the um, quoting process to get your customers to buy the product, enter it as a sales order to ship those products out, and ultimately to collect payment. There's an entire life cycle here, and, and also sub-processes. DocLink has the ability to manage all of these, and it's going to be very similar to what we had talked about in the beginning. So we can, again, capture documents. So whether they're coming from Sage or Acumatica, those can be brought in automatically. When we start talking about a, um, a purchase order from a customer, right? if that's coming in via email, then we can use OCR to extract that data and then maybe put it through some kind of business process. Maybe that sales order or, sorry, customer PO requires some kind of approval before it can be entered. And then, of course, then there's the automated entry into Sage and Acumatica, viewing documents within those screens, easy search and retrieval of all documents in that entire packet. So what would it mean if you could now look for all documents by customer number or customer name or part number? So there becomes a lot more uh, flexibility in terms of accessing those documents. And of course, we still have that delivery component. Would you rather send that AR invoice out with maybe a signed delivery ticket or some other kind of document? That's really where you know, DocLink fits. It manages this entire process, but you get to pick where you're gonna start. So I thought it might be easy, and we get a lot of people, especially in the Acumatica space, um, talking about accounts receivable and automating that particular part of the process. So it really is about capturing the AR invoice directly from your ERP and then sending it out automatically to the customers. Joining up with that supplemental information and just being able to get documents in the hands of your customers easy so they can, of course, pay more timely. So I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to share a use case and then let's have Mark give you an example of what that looks like and what it may look like from your customer's perspective. But we have this um, food and beverage manufacturer and what was exciting about them is that they were actually sending out AR invoices more manually. And I think that they were saving a PDF to the desktop and then attaching the desktop you know, document to an email and then routing it out manually. And I do hear that story over and over when I'm out and about, you know, talking with various prospects and customers. But what would it mean to your organization if you could cut down on the time it takes to get invoices out to customers? 
would that really give you the efficiencies that you're looking for in your organization? So they were able to decrease 90%, and that just is crazy when we start talking about the level of efficiency that it can bring to an organization. Uh, but they did, they started out with uh, AR invoices. That was kind of their you know, big hot button, if you will. And then of course, then they transitioned into doing more of an AP um, process automation. But it was huge for them and really met both their strategic initiatives, growing the organization without adding people in headcount. They were also able to eliminate some physical storage and they were growing with leaps and bounds that really needed that space and that was really important to them. So I think, Mark, um, why don't we go back to you and will you walk us through what it looks like from the customer's perspective on the AR automation side? Yeah, absolutely. So it should be shared back to me. So I'll um, talk about that that process, quote to cash, and what that looks like from a Dolphin's perspective, um, with the same kind of themes in mind from the original, right? Digital transformation, uh, getting documents from paper to digital. We want to keep those documents digital. We have we have the templates already in the ERP, so we might as well utilize them, uh, piggyback off them to digitally capture those documents in the doc link, and it could be. You know, let's just take a sales order, for example. That sales order is still entered into the ERP. We can go uh, print print order, uh, go through that process of physically printing versus, versus physically printing, digitally capturing that document, right? So Docling immediately grabs the, the data from that, grabs the template, and then pulls that into Docling. What that looks like from Docling's perspective is something like this. We're just going to log in as a, a business partner. Let's say uh, one of our customers is... American Business Futures, and we want to find um, all of our uh, sales order, sales order invoices related. Oh, we can do that and, and grab those documents quickly and efficiently. So doing that print capture drops those documents into the DocLink repository, but it takes it one step further and says, well, shoot, I already have the document. We have the uh, email related to the customer uh, from that document as well, from the, from the Sage or Acumatica screen that we're templating it out from. And we can actually send those to our customers in an automated fashion. Doclink creates a cover sheet. It grabs all the, the documentation related. It could be the sales order. It could be the sales order invoice with supporting documents being the sales order. Any documents that you want to add and append as those uh, supporting documents to the documents that we're sending out, Doclink can do that. And it could be uh, a, a part spec sheet based on the item number. It could be really anything that you want. It could be a static terms and condition sheet that gets appended along with everything that gets sent out. And Docling puts it all together without you having to create emails manually. It could be, let's just say, you know, hello customer name attaches your invoice for sales order number, you know, plug it in here. Docling's gonna do all that and create that email template for you, send it out immediately. So you can see where a 90% efficiency gain uh, from uh, American Fruits and Flavors, one of our customers, is actually really possible. It's not just it's just not a number that we throw out there. It is a real number because of this process. On top of that, uh, not only are they getting emails, but the uh, our business partner or customers in this case can actually be set up to uh, where they see their own documents and nobody else's. So we can actually use Doclink as a a partner portal, not just a vendor portal, but a, a customer portal as well. We're going to uh, lock down all the documents related based on customer number, and that's going to relate to their login. So not only is it secure for them and only them, they can only see their stuff and nobody else, which is super important from a security standpoint. So as you can see from the, the, the process of capture from the ERP, taking that information, piggybacking off that, sending an email for immediate uh, transparency and visibility, but also creating that loopback effect where now your, uh, now your customers have immediate access to their documents on a secure document portal where they can download, email, print out if they would like, and it's kind of counterintuitive, but some people like that. So they have now the access to all the documents they need. Think of the time efficiency there as well. Now we're going back to time efficiency. Your customers aren't coming back to you asking for invoices or the original sales order or getting that quote again. They can just simply look at their, their portal and grab all the all the documentation they need directly from there. So there's lots of efficiency gains, a lot of time savings um, through that secure web portal. That's really important from a 
uh, an AR standpoint. And this is, again, just a, an example of how Dotlink is truly enterprise-wide on uh, not just a single department tool from AP. We start with AP a lot because lots of paper. AR is equally a, a large amount of paper, uh, but HR contracts, so on and so forth. We could go on and on and on about all the different documents, but uh, if you have documents that you want to digitize, this is a great, uh, great way to do that. Uh, with that, I will pass it back to Perry Lynn. Thanks, Mark. And as I resharing my screen as well, I just I love what you're saying about the enterprise applicability. I mean, we try and, and keep reminding people about that, that it's so important to think very, very broadly when you're considering document management um, and any business process automation tools. Buy something that can do all things, you know, versus maybe more of a point solution. All right. So, and Mark, you also mentioned the use cases or the possibility of HR and contracts. So why don't we you know, just move into those two sections next, and I'll talk a little bit about, you know, well, how can it be used in, in HR, and what can we do in contract management? The point in sharing these use cases with you is to give you some specifics in terms of not only how can it address those particular departments, but also set you up for really all of these light bulb moments. How, where else are you feeling, you know, paper-based bottlenecks? and an issue in terms of accessing documents. And then let's have a conversation about it and we'll share how DocLink can help. All right, so HR. Let's talk a little bit about HR. So I love the scenario um, that Econo Supermarkets had. So they were growing and growing and wanted to have a solution that would meet all of their requirements. HR was critical. AP, of course, was also critical for them as well. And so they bought Docklink to facilitate an enterprise-wide solution. Um, now, they had a very strong, what we call an ROI equation. I always think everyone knows what ROI, but it simply means return on investment. And they had simply too much paper. They had too much paper, and the backdrop was is that they had 600-plus employees and hundreds of documents. So the whole idea for them was to say, all right, can we do everything in HR? Have a resume bank of which we can store resumes and then you know, look through those in order to be able to pull out appropriate candidates and streamline that entire employee onboarding process and be able to manage that through a particular business process. So that was really kind of what was important to them. And so if you have requirements or needs surrounding HR, you know, let's chat about it. I am sure that whatever you're looking for, there is the possibility that we could use DocLink to help support that initiative. So let's dive into a little bit of details, I think, in terms of what were they looking for and kind of how did it work? So, what they really, really wanted to do was to be able to have a web entity or web service and be able to use that as the centralized repository for all documents. And you see here on the screen, they could manage everything. Like I had mentioned before, they have the resume bank. Um, what this gave them to them as an organization was just more visibility into appropriate candidates and more visibility in terms of managing who required various actions. Um, so that was really important to them. Uh, having their employees accept the new system was really important. And because I think DocLink is very intuitive in terms of the way it is organized, the way it is very easy to access documents, the way that you can layer on security made it a very, very simple application for people to adopt. So chat back to Jolene. If HR is the most primary concern, maybe let her know that HR is really an area of focus. And then when we reach back out to you, then we can maybe have more specific dialogue on the HR side. But let's talk for a moment about contract management and just give you some ideas in terms of how you can use DocLink for contract management. So here again, we're taking the basic concepts or tenants of DocLink capture documents, store them in the system, put them through some kind of approval workflow. You know, that is really kind of the, the core competency. 
when we start talking about contract management and looking at it through the lens of contract management, then we say, all right, what can we really do with contracts? Well, number one, you can store them all in a particular centralized library so that you have easy access to documents. Right, that's going to be really, really critical, especially for remote access, so that you can have the right people accessing the, the right contracts. Now, not only can you do that, but we can now manage those expiration dates and, and push that contract into a workflow so that people have more visibility into when a contract is expiring. Now, that would also allow for you to say, okay, we want to now manage by um, expiration date. That can be important. Or some kind of retention alert. You can have a choice of either just getting an email alert to kind of softly advise someone, hey, this is coming up for renewal, or there's a reminder of some kind of action. But you also have the capability of moving it into a workflow, which is really like a business process, an automated business process and gives you even more visibility across team members into what's going on with that contract. Now, um, as you're creating contracts, that can also be done in DocLink, and things that kind of come into play is being able to manage the version. So as you are going through various iterations of a contract, being able to clearly see what has transpired about that, that's really important. And then also you have the ability of doing some contract templates. So now we're kind of like getting even more sophisticated and more sophisticated on, well, what do you want to do with that contract? Do you simply want to store it? Do we want to put it through approvals? Do we want to start managing dates? Or do we actually want to set up a template, you know, that will help the creation of the template, um, you know, be more efficient in the long run? So some possibilities there. Um, think very broadly. So that's my challenge to you today is I want to give you one example, but I want you to come up with some other examples that may be applicable in your organization. So it could be HR agreements, legal agreements, sales, anything is possible. So you let us know. That's the beauty of the software is that we're not telling you how to use it. You're telling us these are the documents that I'm worried about. Here's how they are being produced today. Here's how they travel through my organization through the approval process, and ultimately here's where I want them to go. So lots and lots of possibilities here. Um, so I would ask again here that just chat back to Jolene, and if contract management is important and really something that's very critical to your organization, then you can you know, let her know and we'll follow up with you on that part of it as well. So we're really coming down to the home stretch of our webinar today. And I thought it might be very helpful just to revisit some of those concepts that we talked about earlier, which is DocLink can indeed be an enterprise-wide system. It is an enterprise-wide document management and business process automation software. And you get to decide what department or what process is most critical for your organization knowing that you can decide to start there and then as your budget and as your time kind of um, reveals itself then you can attack those particular areas as well using the same software that you had purchased initially that's really where i think the value is is that you buy one software package and then it can be implemented for many many different business processes all right so I think with that, I would like to start another poll because I'm curious to know from everything that we've talked about today, what are you seeing? And let's do a little trend analysis again. Where are you trying to start your adventure into document management and business process automation? Is it like what we normally see, which is AP, right? Or maybe it's on the HR side or AR legal maybe you have another idea or you know that has kind of percolated up since we've been talking today so Jolene I'm going to ask that you um, uh, just you know let us know when the results are coming back in from the poll and then we can regroup and, and decide all right if you know is it still AP is AP still the strongest contender I know for me personally I've been seeing a lot of things on the sales order side the entire process you know from generating a quote and automatically sending that out to a customer and then 
being able to onboard customer POs automatically using OCR and then move that through a business process. So that's been kind of highlighted, I think, especially as maybe manufacturing and distribution is, is um, in, you know, increasing right now. All right, Jolene, any, any results so far to report back on? Yep, um, we have accounts payable at 80%, accounts receivable at 80%, <laughs> HR at 20%, legal at 40 percent and other at zero okay okay well isn't that interesting well let us know i mean again here i'd love a chance to work with you more diligently or one of our sales reps at all tech would would work with you and your swk rep and i think in terms of next steps i mean i have a couple other slides but the next steps would be let's set up a call just to walk through kind of what you're doing in these areas today if we do that, then it kind of helps highlight for all team members, you know, where are the inefficiencies? Where are you experiencing the bottlenecks? And then we can come back and then give you a very personalized product demonstration to show you, all right, how is Docwing going to solve the issues that you're experiencing in your organization? And I think if we do it that way, it just makes things very, very simple for everyone to understand. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful in just showcasing some of the ideas of where you can go uh, paperless and, you know, provide streamlined processes. All right, so here's a fun slide. I should do a pop quiz on this one, Jolie, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so I often get asked, what sets Docklink apart in the marketplace? And, you know, I think this slide is a powerful one because if I was sitting in your shoes, I would use it in a couple different ways. Um, number one, yes, it would help me understand, you know, where it's going to impact the organization, but it is also kind of uh, providing a framework to do some of those ROI calculations. So big things here, I think, are um, Doclink can manage the complete life cycle of a document. So from the moment it is either created or coming into the organization, all the way through approval processes, through the context of creating a transaction in the ERP, and then the end as well, which is providing powerful search and retrieval, whether it's to your internal employees or to external employee or ex people, external people, right? Vendors, customers, et cetera, and even auditors. So there's a huge value proposition in helping out with the audit. We covered OCR and automated matching, so that's a, a huge differentiator for Doclink in the marketplace. And the powerful search and retrieval. Um, when Mark was showing you kind of search and retrieval through the lens of the sales order processing and giving you that easy ability of saying, hey, let me look at all documents by a particular part number, you know, um, that I think is very, very powerful. And of course, we can't go without saying a word about the customer support. So we hope that you have an exceptional experience throughout the entire process. Um, we understand that your business is critical, that you have a business to run, that you are um, trying to adopt new processes, you know, at the same time of keeping your business fluid and running. So we want to work with you in a very diligent way to make sure that your experience is wonderful from the moment that you are looking at Doclink all the way through customer support. Uh, Doclink enjoys probably it's about a 95 to 97% retention of our customers. Um, and that, that last little percentage is generally either businesses are um, uh, closing, you know, or they are switching to a different ERP, although they can bring Doclink with them as well in that case. Um, so there's a very high reten um, retention of, of customers. All right, last poll I think for today, which is what was the compelling reason or why are you attending today's session? Is it purely for educational purposes where you're trying to boost your knowledge in an effort of deciding whether or not this technology is something that you should be bringing to your organization? Um, did your boss make you? I always think that, that one's kind of funny. Um, do you already have an initiative in your department? I think that that's kind of interesting. And if so, um, we should probably have a conversation, you know, about uh, your particular requirements. And of course, D, call me, right? Because we need to have a solution right away. So uh, I think Jolene is, is popping up that poll. And Jolene, if you like, you, I'll give this one as optional. If you want to um, report back results, that's totally fine. And if not, that's okay too on this one. 
Perfect, and we'll just give it one more second or two. I'm always curious for the folks that pick number B. <laughs> All right, and we'll close that. And we had results across the board, so we'll be in touch with those of you who asked to be contacted. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Jolene. So, hey, listen, everyone, thank you for the opportunity just to showcase uh, DocLink today and help you think about all the different possibilities of where you can bring DocLink in your organization. And if anything has kind of piqued your interest or resonated, then please reach out to SWK Technologies. Um, they will be able to get you in touch with us. And then, like I mentioned before, we'll set up a call and really talk through what's happening in the organization. And then with that, we can easily get a preliminary quote out to you and uh, gear up for a very personalized product demonstration where you can walk through how DocLink can solve your requirements. So I think with that, we have a little bit of extra time to address some Q&A. So Jolene, I'll leave it up to you. If you've seen any questions come through, we can address those at this time. Perfect, thanks Perry Lynn. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the questions section of GoToWebinar. We'll give that a minute in case any more come through. And just a reminder everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. We do have a few that came in during the presentation, Perry Lynn. First being, does this have a vendor portal where vendors can view payment information? Yes, absolutely. So, um, and Mark did showcase that a little bit on two different flavors. So the, we have a web client, your vendors can go in and look for information there. Um, also, he expanded that because the same portal can be used as a customer portal. It's really all about security. So great question. We have another I love those extended use cases. <laughs> and the second, do documents get saved on a server or in the cloud? And do they get archived? Yeah, so I can answer that one. Really, the, the short answer is we have choices uh, to be able to do either uh, based on preferences on on-premise software, cloud software. Uh, with our latest release, Docker can actually be um, in the cloud and linking back to an on-premise uh, ERP. So if you have the Sage 100, Sage 300s, 500s that are on-premise today, Docker can still be in the cloud, almost like a hybrid model, if you will. So it could be in the cloud, could be on-premise. Um, you can archive them, you can uh, purge them. Basically, you own your documents and your data and you can do with what you want with them. Great, we have another. Is DocLink a monthly subscription or a pay-as-you-go solution? This is Terry Lynn, I can take that one. So we have a couple different pricing models. So there is a, a subscription plan. You can also pay for that monthly. Uh, you can also, own the software outright in terms of what we would call a perpetual license. So there's a lot of different varieties we can help you with. So let us know what's of interest and we'll work with you on that part. We have a couple more. Will we receive the slide deck? So we, I will be sending out the webinar recording by end of day tomorrow, but Perry Lynn, I can also send out the slide deck if your team's all right with that. Absolutely. Let me clean up some of the note slides and then I can send that out for you. Perfect. Thank to you. To you directly, Jolene, and then you can pass it along. Uh -huh, Perfect. Welcome. And we have one more. Our, our POs come from a different software. Is that an issue? Mark, why don't you take that one? Because I know that that one has a little bit of some nuances to the answer. Yeah, and sorry, I was on mute trying to respond. Um, yeah, the short answer is it's usually not a problem. If uh, you know we've done we've done testing with ERPs, we're going to want to know the the third party that those POs are coming from to get an idea of what the output is. It's always the unknown when we deal with that, um, and so what we can do is just do a quick test on those, give you a, an answer as to you know is it going to be accepted? Like 95, 99% of the time, it's a yes. Uh, we do have those outliers, so we want to make sure of it. I'm not going to just say yes to everything. Nothing's ever 100%, of course. So uh, we'll do some testing and get a get a correct answer. Perfect. Then just give me one second as I take back screen control. Perfect. 
Well, thank you so much, Perry Lynn and Mark, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. And thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Jolene. Bye-bye, everyone.